be ready to go. It's getting late. It's gonna be past midnight by the time we get home. Just a minute, Joe. I'm gonna, I'm gonna clean up with this one. Are you kidding? You haven't got a chance of... Come on, now. Come on, Joe. I'll see you out in a month for Give me one card, son. Oh, yes, yes, ma'am. Does this wagon belong to you? Uh, yeah, this, this is my wagon. Then could I persuade you to drive me to Carson City? Carson City is a pretty long way this late at night. I'd pay you well, anything you ask, but it's vital that I leave at once. Yeah, well, I, I'd sure like to help you, ma'am. See, I've got a brother over there in a the saloon, and he's... You don't understand how desperately I need to get away. It's... Hey, look, is somebody bought... Huh? I only had two beers. <laughs> hey, don't tell me. You, you didn't draw to an inside straight. Yep. You gotta take chances, little Joe, like Charles Augustus Hackett taught me. Yep. A little lesson I learned, you gotta take a chance, Joe. Who? Oh? <laughs> Charles Augustus Hackett, the richest man in the world. Oh, yeah? Yeah, he's in town, you know. He bought that old Simmons mine that everybody thought was petered out. Mm -hmm. And in two weeks, they done found the main vein again, and he done made another big fortune. Yep. If you want to be rich, Joe, you gotta take chances like me and Mr. Hackett. <laughs> Is that right? Yep, that's it. Well, you know something? I think I'm gonna take a chance. Yeah? Yeah, I'm gonna let you drive home, and I'm gonna take a chance that you won't drive off the road while I'm asleep. Yep. It is so nice to be rich. Get up there. Right? Yes. My name is Hackett, Charles Augustus Hackett. <laughs> yes, I know Mr. Hackett. Oh? Well, I've seen your photos in San Francisco newspapers, and of course I knew you were in town. Well, I'm inspecting a little mine operation I have around here. Oh, forgive me. My wife, Maria? How are you? Hello. My friend and associate, Mr. Carl Davis. How do you do? Davis, as my son Joseph, and my uh, other two sons, Adam and Hoss. I hear you have a mountain range of timberland. Well, you know, I'm always in the market for lumber. Maybe we can uh, discuss a little deal. Well, actually, we, we haven't any lumber to sell, but uh, we can have some coffee. Won't you come in? Ah, splendid. <laughs> uh, I'm afraid this business will bore you, my dear. Maybe you could take a little uh, ride around the ranch? Yes, that would be lovely. Perhaps you could show me some of the more scenic spots. 
It'd be my pleasure. Yes, well, don't take too long. This shouldn't take longer than a half hour. I said it's my favorite spot. You know, it would frighten me if it were mine. I'd love it so much I'd be afraid of losing it. Oh, there's not much chance of anybody sticking all that in their back pocket. You're lucky being so secure. Me? What about you? Married to a man like Charles Augustus Hackett? How much more security can you get? You must have everything you want. I have everything I need. Mrs. Hackett, aren't you the woman who asked me to drive her to Carson City the other night? I wish you'd forget that. Well, I was just curious. Please. It's forgotten. Well, I guess we'd better ride back. Charles will be waiting. <coughs> My cook's in town. I guess that's not very good coffee, is it? <laughs> I gotta apologize for that. Mr. Davis is a little luckier being outside looking at the livestock. <laughs> yes, Mr. Goddard, I've been inquiring all over town about you. Oh? Yes, sir, and the more I hear and see about this Ponderosa, the more I like it. Well, that's praise from Caesar. And now about that timber. Oh, Mr. Hackett, I... I haven't any lumber for sale. <laughs> Mr. Cartwright, everything is for sale. Just name your price. Well, you see, we had a uh, big fire up on that mountain about 15 years ago, and that's all reseeded timber, and I'm afraid it isn't ready for cutting yet. Why don't you let me be the judge of that? I've already judged it. Then you really don't want to sell, do you? <clears throat> How long have you had that bull? Well, let's see. It's been about three years, hasn't it, Adam? Yeah. Paul sent all the way to Texas for him. It's a magnificent beast. Mr. Cartwright, the finest livestock I've ever seen. Well, thank you. I said a half hour. It's been 40 minutes. I'm sorry, Charles. This scenery is so beautiful. Mr. Cartwright, I've never seen anything as lovely as this Ponderosa. You're very kind. You really like it that much, my dear? Oh, yes. I wish we could have a place like this. Well, if you're that impressed with it, perhaps we shall, my dear. Now we must get back into town. Thank you very much for your hospitality, Mr. Cartwright. Well, you're more than welcome. Uh, if you come again next time, uh, I'll have better coffee for you. <laughs> that at least is a deal. Cartwright boy, we're gone a long time. What were you talking about? We were talking about the Ponderosa. Oh. Do you really mean what you said about liking it so much? Of course I meant it. Why would I lie? Now, why are you snapping at me? Especially when I'm about to do something for you. Now, how would you like to own this Ponderosa you admire so much? You must be joking, Charles. Why? You said we should have a place like that. 
You build ponderosas with work and love and pride. You don't just buy them. Well, I can. Besides, why build one when there's that place out there just ready and waiting? Charles, you don't understand. I don't want the Ponderosa. Well, I do. Besides, the situation intrigues me. This, uh, this Cartwright, very stubborn man. And I want to see just how stubborn. Charles, please, leave the Cartwrights alone. You saw them out there. They're a happy, contented, loving family. Go tell the room clerk who'll be staying a few more days. Charles, I agree with Maria. What use would the Ponderosa be to you? Your headquarters are in San Francisco. I don't pay you for your opinions. I pay you to do as you're told. Now go do it. Oh. I know you're all upset. Well, that's too bad. What are you going to do, run away again? <laughs> You're so stupid, my dear. Where in the whole world would you hide from the men that I would hire to go and get you? I said to myself, I've got to take one more look at the Ponderosa. <laughs> Help yourself. Yes, sir. The more I look at this place, the more impressed I am. You know something, Cartwright? What? If I owned the Ponderosa, I'd put the main house right there, overlooking that view. Well, every man to his own view. All right, what's it worth? <laughs> the view? <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> including the view. You mean in money? What else? Were well, you suggesting, Mr. Hackett, that you might be interested in buying the Ponderosa? Try me. Name a price. Uh, it isn't for sale. I'm a very determined man. So am I. And there's no chance of you changing your mind. Well, I just couldn't resist giving it another try. Well, there's no harm in that. <laughs> well, I might as well be on my way now. Joe, I haven't much time. I want you to listen to me. You've got to convince your father to sell this ranch. What are you talking about? Believe me, he will be no match for Charles Hackett, no matter what he thinks. If he doesn't sell this ranch... Well, Mrs. Hackett, your husband offered to buy the ranch. My father doesn't want to sell it. You think my husband sent me here, don't you? All right, then you tell me why you did come. I came because I think you and your family have something good and decent, and I don't want to see my husband destroy it. Oh, I think you're making an awful lot out of nothing. There's no contest here. There's nothing your husband can dream up that'll ever make my father sell this place. What my husband will dream up will be a nightmare for your family. Now, do you honestly expect me to believe with everything your husband owns that he's going to be this upset about not having this ranch? It's not the ranch he wants now, don't you understand? It's the game that counts. The playing of the game. Destroying anyone that stands in his way. That's his pleasure now. Oh, please talk to your father. Tell him to be reasonable. Tell him to give in. Not the way you have? Look, if you feel this way about this man, why did you marry him in the first place? I married him because I loved him. And because I thought him the most wonderful man in the world. He took care of me when my parents died. He sent me to Europe. He educated me. He took good care of me. And when he asked me to marry him, I was flattered and proud. Now, what were you doing the other night? I was being foolish. You see, there's nowhere in the world I can go to get away from Charles Hackett. Mrs. Hackett, there's nobody that powerful. Yes, he is. 
And that's what I'm trying to tell you. Don't fight him. It costs too much. Believe me, I know. Mrs. Hackett? Yeah. What did she want? Uh, she just came out to tell us that the richest man in the world can have anything he wants in the world, including the Ponderosa. Pick up that feed order. Boys are loaded up and you give me the bad news. Good morning. Mr. Cartwright. Horse, Joe. Uh, boys better start loading up that feed grain. Ben, uh, your uh, order's been canceled. I sold out yesterday. I'm just managing the place now for Mr. Hackett. Why? I wouldn't sell you my home. Now, do you really think I could be influenced by a couple of bags of feed grain? Well, you must admit that it is the beginning. Come on, Paul. We can get all the grain we want in Carson City. If you're thinking of taking a ride to Carson City, I would uh, save yourself the trip. I bought the feed and grain store there, too. Let's get ready for dinner. I'm waiting dinner for you. I got trouble. Hmm? There's no water in the north pasture. Well, that stream never dries up. Didn't dry up. It was cut off. Dammed up just over our property line. There's two men guarding it. What, on Harry Towers' place? They're not Harry Towers' men. They're hired guns. Said that they're to protect the property rights of Charles Augustus Hackett. giving a fancy blowout for the monkey mucks over his hotel. Looking for Harry Towers. Is he around here? Uh, yeah, back there. Stay here. Why? I've been expecting you, Ben. Why didn't you have the decency to tell me yourself? We had a deal for those water rights before little Joe was born. We've been friends and neighbors. Why did you do this to me? I couldn't help myself. You couldn't help yourself? Did you know that he built a dam and put hired killers around it? I just sold him the land. I couldn't stop him from doing whatever he wants with it. But you knew what he wanted. Look, Ben, he can't hurt you too bad. You can bring water down the sluice from Lake Tahoe. Or move the herd over to the west pasture till this blows over. You have the answers to all my problems, don't you, Harry? What about yours? Ben... Don't make it any tougher on me, please. Tougher on you? Hackett is pushing me against the wall. Now, why did you do this to me? Why? I needed money. You needed money? Why not come to me? I'm your friend. I couldn't. 
I had to sell. You had to hurt me. Yeah, I. I'm sorry. You're sorry. So am I. Stay here, I'll be back. <laughs> uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, your attention, please. I wish to propose a toast to our most gracious host, Charles Augustus Hackett. Virginia City's most important and most welcome visitor. Nor is it every day that we have the pleasure of the finest imported French cookery and the finest French champagne flowing like water. And so, ladies and gentlemen, it is with great civic gratitude that I say, that I say... Come in, Cartwright, join the festivities. What I have to say is better said in private. Uh -huh. All right, the party's over, everybody out. I said the party's over, get out. Cut, right? Your fight is with me, Hackett. Keep it that way. Don't try to get at me through my friends. Friends? Like Harry Towers? Like Harry Towers. I don't know how you got him to sell his land to you, but I know it could have been just for the money. Oh, dear me. <laughs> I thought you were going to accuse me of using that old bromide that money can buy anything. Champagne? But money in the hands of men who know how to use it, that know its power well. That's another thing altogether. Then truly becomes a weapon that can command anything. Anything. Loyalty and love. And your Ponderosa? My Ponderosa. Now, why would you want that? Why are you so willing to sacrifice Harry Towers in order to get it? Why? Because I decided I wanted it. Well, that's... That's just plain greed. It's a sickness of the mind. Sickness? I've created an empire, Cartwright. An empire that employs thousands of people. That earns profits. Not only for me, but for hundreds of others. I build ships and railroads. I strip the earth for lumber and replace its barrenness with factories. I finance innumerable businesses that ply the whole world for trade. I... I dream and create beyond the imagination of most humans. If that's a sickness card right, then more men need to be infected. After that sickness depends the greatness of this country. You use words very well, Hackett. But you distort their meaning. We all build empires. Not as big as yours, possibly, but we build them. Perhaps it's only one man raising a family or earning a living. There's one big difference between us. In order to fulfill your ambition, you'd as soon destroy as create. And that's your sickness. And in the end, it'll destroy you. Your opinion, and that of any others, is of no interest to me, Cartwright. I tell you again, I'll win. I'll make that precious Ponderosa cost so much to keep. 
You'll beg me to take it. I'll... Charles. I don't need your help. Now we know what kind of man he is. What about you? What about this loyalty he commands? Well, once I was rich, as rich as he, and he broke me. And then he picked me up and made me his associate. His associate? What about this love? which he says comes from you. He took me in as an orphan. He raised me, educated me. And married you. For love? Love. Loyalty. Why don't you use the honest words? Thank you for coming. I got your note. I came as quick as I could. I'm leaving my husband. This time I'm really leaving. I can't stand it anymore. The other day when I told you I was afraid to leave, you said no man was that powerful. I still believe that. Then help me prove it. Please. What do you want me to do? Take me to Carson City, so I can get the stage east. All right, my buggy's outside. Where do you think you're going, Cartwright? Well? Your wife is leaving you, Mr. Hackett. Leaving? You mean she's running off with you? No, not with me, away from you. I'm just taking her to Carson City so she can take the stage east. You're a liar. You're trying to steal my wife and this isn't the first time. Tell him, Maria. Well, Maria? It's no use, little Joe. I told you we'd never get away with it. I'm sorry. fool out of me. I believed everything she told me. When her husband stopped us, everybody in that town was watching. The whole thing was a plan and she knew it. Well, it wasn't your fault, Joe. Yeah, well, you hear the gossips. I guarantee you by tomorrow, everybody in town will believe Hackett's story. 
Joe? You know, I think there's a very easy way to deal with the gossips. Uh, tomorrow, you and Horse ride into town, and you act like nothing happened, naturally. Don't let anything upset you. Don't let anybody ride you. And I think that ought to show the gossips, and Mr. Hackett particularly, that you're on to the little scheme. So everybody can see you're in town, like Paul said. Look, I could have taken care of this whole thing alone. Paul don't trust your temper, and neither do I. Wow, well, look who's in town. What's up, little Joe Cartwright? Well, maybe little Joe's in town to do some more, uh, wife stealing, eh, Luke? <laughs> <laughs> He's a dangerous man to have around. Wives. <laughs> Why don't you keep your mouth shut, Phil? Oh, wait a minute, little Joe. I ain't got no beef with you. See, because uh, I ain't got no wife. <laughs> What'd you go hit him for? Well, what'd you want me to do, let him walk on me? I want you to do just like Pa said and hold your temper. Look, if you don't like it, then why don't you mind your own business? Pa said that... That's right, Pa, not you. Davis, let him in. Well? The exact amount you paid for my ranch. And now you want your ranch back. Please. So Cartwright sent you begging. He doesn't know about this. I just want to undo what's been done. And what about you and that little information I have? I'll just have to take my chances. Well, don't be so noble. You're leaving Virginia City, Hackett, one way or another. <laughs> now, you put that gun away, and I'll forget you ever pointed it at me. I mean business. I said one way or another. You there? Get the sheriff. Carl. Carl. Oh, what? He's a killer! Get him, you fools! He just shot a man out for copyrights! Shoot him! Shoot him, he's a murderer! Shoot him! Shoot him, he's a murderer! You only wounded him! Get him! Get him, you fools! Maria, help him. Not, not for what he is. Not for what he can do. He's a killer! Get him! Get him, you fools! He just shot him at 5,000 for Harry Towers, dead or alive! $5,000! He's 
dead. The fool. I could have talked Towers out of that gun. A mistake. Well, what mistakes? Protecting myself against a couple of Hackett's men? I told you this morning before you went into town to restrain yourself, no matter what. Is that correct? Well, how much do I have to take? More than you did. And that goes for you too, Horace. Well, he should have stayed out of it anyway. It was none of his business. All I did was help you end a fight that you shouldn't have started in the first place. I didn't need any help. I think you need help more than you know. Oh, great. Now you're going to get in on it, too, huh? That's right. If you hadn't been running around trying to play Sir Galahad to Mrs. Hackett, you wouldn't have gotten yourself into this mess. Well, the same thing I said to Horse goes for you. Mind your own business. All right, that's enough. Mr. Hackett just loved to hear this argument. He's just hoping we have more and more of them until finally we can't even stand the sight of each other. Or the sight of this house. What is the Ponderosa? It's not just a, a house a ranch, or land, or trees. It's us working together, living together, respecting each other. This bickering makes the whole thing worthless to us. And that's exactly what Mr. Hackett hopes it will become. Worthless.
I've made all the arrangements. We'll bury Carl in the morning. You don't even know what guilt is, do you? Guilt? Carl died for you and because of you. Well, that was his choice, not mine. And you're capitalizing on his death. At least he didn't die entirely in vain. Even after years of knowing you, I can't believe the way you think. You put a price on everything, even human life, and a value on nothing. Why did you ever marry me? I married you because I thought you needed me. As I'd needed you most of my life. I was ready to love you with every fiber of my being. Look, Maria, you have to face reality. You can't constantly whine about needed and loved. Life is strength and purpose. What purpose? To live alone? If necessary. At least I give you the chance to live on my side. The side that doesn't have to sacrifice for anybody. Oh, if only you'd understand that. What a beautiful life we'd live together. What do you want? I just left a dead man at my house. Harry Towers. And I'm holding you responsible for his death and for the death of Carl Davis. What do I want? I came here to kill you. Oh, did you? Yes. But killing is your way of doing things, isn't it? If you want the Ponderosa, you're gonna have to kill me to get it. Don't be a fool, Cartwright. If I wanted to play it that way, I would have doubled the men and doubled the guns. Well, I'm sure you could get ten times the men and ten times the guns, and you'll need them all, because we'll be waiting for you. If you're gonna be stupid as well as stubborn, then I'm gonna wipe you out, Cartwright. I'm not wait. I don't know. What's the matter? The pills. The draw. Pedro. What pills? Get him! I don't know what he means. pills in there. Maria, the pills. What pills? Maria. I don't know what you mean, Charles. I didn't even know you had this weakness. Maria, please. Help me. I better get the doctor. No, wait. Say it again. Help me! One will be enough. I wanted him to die. For my sake and for yours. And everyone he would hurt in the future. But I couldn't let him. He hadn't corrupted me enough. I guess I'm in your debt, Cartwright. Well, uh, I didn't give you these pills, your wife did. She took them away in the first place. Yeah, but she gave them to you when you needed them. In fact, she gave you something you couldn't buy. Your life. That's because she's weak. As you are. I figured she gave them to you because she loved you. Even though she might not know it. Must be awfully lonely. When you get those attacks of yours, 
to have to depend only on some pills. You know, Hackett, for a man who's accomplished so much, you missed the most important thing of all. Behind that door. If you're big enough to admit it. Hey, Paul, where you been? We've been looking all over for you. Oh, I uh, just dropped by here on the way home. You know, Hackett was wrong about that, too. What are you, what are you talking about? Well, we, we were by here the other morning. He said that would have been a much better place to build a house. It's a terrible place yeah, for a house. But, Papa, that's where we were trying to find you. Hackett left town with Maria. Yes, I know. You know? Well, what happened? You know, that Hackett. He's a much richer man than even he thought he was. Bigger man, too. Bigger man. Well, I'll tell you about it on the way home. Yeah, well, 